I'm curious, at some point you had this epiphany where this kind of revealed itself to you as probably there all along, but one day it just really revealed itself. Talk to us about that day. Yeah, I was working on a client project and I just felt that they were being uh, disingenuous, um, a little bit fake, a little bit um, uh, artificial. Uh, today, we would say that they were not being authentic to themselves, and but we didn't articulate that as being authentic, you know, back in 1999, 2000, 2001. And so the client uh, at the time was Lego, and I was in advertising, and I was working on, as one of the executive creative directors on Lego, I, I assume that there are probably other ones because there are also other agencies at the time. And... Um, but I was going back and forth between Billund and New York City. Billund is where Lego uh, headquarters is in Denmark, out in the middle of nowhere. And um, between there and New York City, and then I was also going to the Lego land in um, Carlsbad, out in California, north of San Diego. And um, that's when I learned that you could buy a Mighty Mouse roller coaster and put whatever kind of shell you want on it. You could put a Steve Brown <laughs> shell on there and uh, ROI online shell on there and you could have your own own roller coaster ride, you know? And that's what Lego is doing. They were taking off the shelf elements and putting them on. Uh, whereas in the Lego land, at the Lego land in Billund at headquarters that had been done by the grandfather and it was like Walt, he was there Walt Disney and it was very, um, there was heart, heart and soul there, right? And so, so to make a long story short, the, uh, that is exactly, that was a feeling that I had. It was exactly the same time that a um, McKinsey consultant was working with them. And he told the family that if they continued on the way they were going, they'd be out of business in the next two or three years. And so there, what I felt in my gut was actually in reality happening. And, so uh, what I started to think about is why do we care about some products and services and not about others and the com either the companies that make them and or the products. And there were the usual ones, um, but there were also like Coca-Cola and American Express and things like that. But there were also, there was a, a coffee company that was sweeping the nation at that time called Starbucks and they weren't doing any advertising. And remember my perspective at the time was in advertising, from advertising. Uh, from an advertising point of view and they weren't advertising and Google was was had just started to become popular They had just been created uh, Maybe two years old or something and uh, and they were not advertising uh, There was no YouTube or Twitter or anything like that yet So there would always be this and I talk about this in the book a little bit But there would always be this uncomfortable moment when you're presenting a campaign and you've gone all the way up through the hierarchy of the company the advertiser and you'd finally be with the CEO or president and they'd say, well, Google and Starbucks don't advertise and they seem to be doing very well. <laughs> They're on fire. Uh, why should we be spending $30 million uh, on this advertising project campaign? And there'd be an uncomfortable silence in the room and someone would pull something up from the air and you know we'd move on and you'd run the advertising. But um, they had a point and there was something there that was outside of advertising that was going on certainly at Starbucks and Google and people were talking at that time about Nike tribes and the Apple cult and all that but they didn't know how to create it for themselves other than by imitating Apple and Nike and and which is why I always point to why today uh, we still have Gatorade commercials that run that look like their 1990s Nike spots Yes. And so the, um, and I've been saying that for 10 years, over, like well, it, almost 20 years now, right? <laughs> like they pulled that white label Mickey Mouse version yeah. of that ad and just put yeah. Gatorade on it. And so, so I started to think about um, icons. I thought about the Nike swoosh and I thought about the, the cross and I thought about, um, you know, other things like that. And then I thought, well, they have icons and uh, they all have, seem to have a creation story. Uh, Nike, you know, started in a garage or in uh, Bill Bowerman's kitchen making the waffle sole with his wife's waffle iron. And uh, Apple started in a garage and 3M started as a, as a um, sandpaper company and IBM started as an office supplies company and 
they had that. And then they had all these other things. They had a creed, obviously, think different, and, and just do it, and so forth. They had icons, rituals uh, that went with the icons. They had a group of special words, ice grande, skinny decaf, latte. Uh, they had people who didn't want to go there, non-believers, pagans, they called them at first. And um, um, for all the Starbucks that are out there, there are still people going to Tim Horton or Dunkin' Donuts or these days, you know, um, Stumptown or Blue Bottle or some other place that they prefer. And, uh, and then there's a leader. And so once you wrap all those things together, you, have, you develop what today we call a strategic brand narrative which came from one of the books, which is nomenclature that came from one someone who read the book. And um, you pull that together and you construct, create, you build what uh, today we feel is a unifying theory that um, is really a level above social media, digital media, uh, in traditional advertising and experiences and um, helps drive the content that goes into those. Amazing, right? Thanks for watching these golden nuggets. And as a reward, I got another big fat golden nugget just for you. I wrote this book for you to help you get your act together online so you can grow your business better. You're searching, you want to learn. This is a great book. Grab the book, grow your business.